In this video, we're going to review some relationships you should know about parallel lines, transversals, and their angles. First of all, you probably recall from middle school that whenever two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, some really special things happen to their angles. So in this problem here, they've told us that line M is parallel to line N. We're going to mark that in our picture by putting an arrow going in the same direction on each of those lines. And that's our indication or our notation to us that those two lines are parallel to each other. In addition, I personally, when I'm working with parallel lines, I like to grab a highlighter and I like to highlight the lines that are parallel to each other. And again, it's just a heads up or an indication to me that these two lines are parallel. T is the transversal. And a transversal, very simply, is just a line that intersects two or more other lines. So my transversal in this picture, represented by that blue line. Now, whenever two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, it just so happens that alternate interior angles are congruent. And that's a nice thing to know, but it's really only truly helpful if you know what alternate interior angles are. Alternate refers to the transversal. So whenever we see that word alternate, we're going to think opposite sides of the transversal. Interior, just like when you go to Home Depot to buy interior paint, it's for the inside of your house. Interior refers to inside the parallel lines. So in other words, alternate interior angles are angles that are inside the parallel lines, but on opposite sides of the transversal. So in looking at this picture here, angles 4 and 6 are inside the green lines, but on opposite sides of the blue transversal, making them alternate interior angles. And because those lines are parallel, they're always going to be congruent to each other. Now, if you're sitting at home looking at that picture saying, hey, wait a minute, what about angles 3 and 5? Aren't they alternate interior angles as well? You'd be absolutely right. Angles 3 and 5 are both inside the transversal, yet on opposite sides sorry, inside the parallel lines, but on opposite sides of the transversal, making them the alternate interior angles as well. And because those lines are parallel, those two angles have to be congruent. Notice that I'm going to mark those two with two arcs, indicating to me, myself that they are congruent to each other, yet not congruent to angles four and six. All right, the next special thing that happens is that whenever two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate exterior angles are congruent. Well, that word alternate still refers to opposite sides of the transversal, but now we're talking exterior. And just like my analogy with interior in the paint, if I go to Home Depot to buy exterior paint, I'm buying paint for the outside of my house. So alternate exterior angles are going to be angles on opposite sides of the transversal that are outside of my parallel lines. Now, in looking at this picture that I've got here, angles 3 and 1 are vertical. They're going to have to be congruent. Angle 1 has an alternate exterior angle. His alternate exterior angle is going to have to be angle 7. And notice that angles 5 and 7 are congruent because they're vertical angles as well. So all of a sudden, we're getting this picture filled up with a whole bunch of different congruent angles. As far as alternate exterior angles are concerned, though, we have angle 1 congruent to angle 7. And likewise, in the picture, we're going to have angles 2 and 8 also congruent to each other. The next relationship that you have to be aware of when it comes to parallel lines has to do with corresponding angles. Corresponding angles, I think, are the most difficult ones to explain. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to envision taking line M and sliding line M down on top of line N. And if I were to slide line M down on top of line N, the corresponding angles would be the ones that would end up right on top of each other. So if I were to slide line M down until it landed on line N, angle 2 would be on top of angle 6 making them corresponding angles. Angle 1 would be on top of angle 5, making those corresponding angles. And likewise, 4 and 8 would be corresponding, as would be 3 and 7. 
So for the corresponding angles, I actually have four different pairs of corresponding angles. So I set angle 1 and angle 5, angle 2 and 6, angles 4 and 8, and the last pair, angles 3 and 7. Okay, and the last relationship that you need to be aware of is a little bit different. This one says same side interior angles, and notice it says they're supplementary. Same side, you probably figured out, refers to same side of the transversal. And interior, you know now, means inside the parallel lines. So in other words, angles that are inside the parallel lines but on the same side of the transversal have to be supplementary. So when I go and look at this picture, angles 3 and 6 are both to the right of that blue transversal. They're inside the green parallel lines, making them same side interior angles. Likewise, angles 4 and 6, sorry, 4 and 5 are both on the same side of the blue transversal. They're both inside the parallel lines, making them same side interior angles. When we write this down, we have to be a little bit careful because, again, they're not congruent, but rather they are supplementary. So I want to say that angle 3 is supplementary to angle 6. And the abbreviation I'm going to use to represent the word supplementary, and I'm going to do this all year long, including on the midterm, on the Regents exam, this is an acceptable abbreviation, I'm going to use SUPP. And angle 4 is supplementary to angle 5. If you are more comfortable writing the whole word out, you can definitely feel uh, free to write the whole word supplementary out, but I'm going to use that abbreviation. All right, down at the bottom, they want us to use our knowledge of parallel lines in order to write an algebraic equation, solve for x, justify the equation that we've written for, and then find the value of x. So in looking at this first picture, they tell us that lines r and s are parallel. R and S are these two guys in the picture that weren't labeled. I'm going to indicate on my picture that they're parallel by putting an arrow on each. I'm going to grab my highlighter and I'm going to highlight those parallel lines. So if those guys are parallel lines, that makes, again, the blue line my transversal. If I were to slide line R down on top of line S, the X plus 25 would end up right on top of the 110 making them corresponding angles. And I know that any timelines are parallel, corresponding angles are equal. So I'm going to go ahead and write an equation that states that those two guys are equal. And again, it says justify my equation. That's because parallel lines have either corresponding angles that are congruent, or I'm going to say congruent corresponding angles. And now I'm going to go ahead and solve for x. So the value of x ends up being equal to 85. All right, then in the next one, again, they're telling us that these two lines are parallel. So the first thing I'm going to do is indicate on my picture with a pair of arrows going in the same direction that those two lines are parallel. I'm going to grab my highlighter and I'm going to highlight those lines as an indication to myself that they are indeed parallel which makes this red line in this picture my transversal. Now if I look at those two angles that are described in the picture, the 2x and the 3x, one is inside the parallel lines, the 3x is outside the parallel lines. So they really don't have any special relationships that were given to us um, in the relationships I talked about earlier in the video. However, this 3x is vertical to this other interior angle. And we all know that vertical angles are congruent to each other, so I'm going to go ahead and label this guy with a 3x. Now the 2x and the 3x are both inside the parallel lines on the same side of the transversal, so that makes these two guys supplementary. So my equation would say 2x plus 3x 
equals 180 degrees, and my justification is that same side interior angles And I didn't do a very good job getting that in there. Same side interior angles are always going to be supplementary. So that means 5x is equal to 180 degrees, and each x equals 36. All right, you really need to be familiar and comfortable working with these vocabulary words. They're very, very, very important. Up at the top of the next page, like I always, I want you to put the key ideas and important understandings into your own words, into something that makes sense for you, and then see what you can do with the questions there on page four.